Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. Today, we're going to be talking about how citizen journalists and activists need to pay attention to government and stay focused on the issues that matter the power, the money, and the control. Those are the subjects that you should be paying attention to because that's what government doesn't want you to look at. Well, thank you for watching. Again, uh, this is We the Governed, and I want to point out that we have been very busy lately. I've been uh, traveling around the state quite a bit and trying to do as many of these videos as possible. And even though I'm reporting from a blue state, the state of Washington, and I love this place, but I have to tell you that what I'm going to talk about is actually appropriate for you, regardless of where you live, whatever state you're from, because these issues and challenges face us, regardless of whether Republicans or Democrats are in control, and it's just part of government. Now, I try to give a trigger warning at the beginning of these videos videos just talking about how nothing I say here has been approved by the Ministry of COVID Compliance, either in my state or any other. And uh, so that's a trigger warning. If you just want to listen to what the government tells you, please stop watching right now because you're going to hear things they certainly don't want you to know. Uh, and so I think it's always important to be open and transparent with everybody right as we get started. So now let's talk about the power, the priorities of government. And as a this is important to pay attention to because if you're going to be a citizen journalist or you're going to be a watchdog or you care about what's going on in your community, it's important to know that there are things that government does oftentimes to distract you so that you don't pay attention to the things that they really don't want you to look at. And inevitably, those issues, those subjects, tend to revolve around the power, money, and control, particularly money. The last thing they want you to do is to look at how they're spending your money or how they're squandering it. And uh, I'll give you just a little example at a local level, but you can actually see this happen at every level of government. What happens is the budget is a big deal. How they spend their money, how they distribute the cash, the cash they get from you, the taxpayer, uh, how they distribute it, that's a big deal. And oftentimes there's a lot of stuff there they do not want you to know about. So I know at a local city one, count, uh, one time, there they always would do this. Every time budget would be coming up and the city manager there would always have something to distract the population with. Like for example, even though they added millions of dollars to their budget and they're bloating it and squandering it everywhere, he would decide we're going to crack down and cut the Christmas pageant tree budget so that all these people would protest this long-standing uh, thing that they had in town and they would come in, they'd fill the chambers and testify against it and all this. And eventually, of course, the city manager would relent and the city council would be able to find the, the money and they'd put it back in. And meanwhile, nobody was paying attention to the millions of dollars that city was squandering in the background. And the budget passes without much comment, and nobody notices, and they're all arguing about the distractions, little distraction over here that really isn't that critical. That's an example of distracting you from paying attention to what really matters to them. So that's the thing to always remember, I think, as a citizen journalist and activist, when you're paying attention to government, uh, look where they don't want you to look. And ultimately, it is mostly about the money, in my opinion. Uh, it's always about the money, because the one thing that government has to distribute is the money that they take from you in taxes or regulatory fees or whatever they can uh, acquire and how they distribute it to others and to themselves. And that is oftentimes, that's kind of the ugly sausage uh, making process that occurs behind the scenes in government. And that occurs at the trillion dollar level, at the federal level, the billion dollar level at your state, and at the million dollar level in your local counties and cities and school boards. It's going on all the time. And uh, there's a lot there they don't want you to see. And so the thing to remember about is why would they want you to distract you from this? And it isn't just the obvious stuff like uh, people taking bribes or definitely rewarding themselves. I've done plenty of stories about people who have done this or stealing money. And, uh, and that's the most obvious. It's the one that everybody pays attention to the most. But I don't think it's actually the most common. The most common are ways that are a little bit more subtle than just that. Uh, it's usually not about grabbing money or getting kickbacks and direct payoffs in the back end. It's oftentimes other ways of using the money, your tax dollars, and squandering it in a way that uh, helps those politicians stay in power, that bureaucracy to grow. One very common way being done local all the way up to the federal level is making sure contracts get out to your friends. So if you're a politician in office, you're going to reward those who ensure you stay in power and making sure those contracts get out to those friends, whether they're qualified or not. Whatever those contracts are, they are large, they're extensive, and pretty much nobody's paying attention to how well you do your job. So if you're politically connected, you can get those contracts, make millions or billions of dollars, depending on what level of government you're looking at, and generally nobody's going to be paying any attention. So that's something that you as a citizen uh, journalist and an an activist should be paying attention to. Then there's going to be the grant grifting schemes, which is becoming more and more common all over America today. 
These are oftentimes ostensible nonprofit recipients of money that comes from local government. Uh, it could be part of the industrial complex, the homeless industrial complex, where basically they pretend that they're actually going to solve uh, or help and in some way homelessness or drug addiction or the cost, low cost housing, whatever they want to pretend like they're going to solve. And they will take millions and millions of dollars, ultimately billions of dollars. And uh, basically the problem seems to keep getting worse all the time. There's a great incentive to ensure that the problem never gets solved because there's a lot more money coming to your special nonprofit if you don't solve that problem. And this is what they do. Cities and counties and states all over America do it all the time. And if you want to see examples of complete disaster when the grant grifting machine becomes so big nobody knows how to turn off the spigot, go to places like San Francisco or Portland or Seattle. Uh, a good demonstrations of how to destroy your city as fast as possible using grant grifting schemes. It's not just a homeless industrial complex. You can see it in the green environmental movement that does oftentimes the same thing. Uh, gang green and the government staff infection is very, very real, which leads us to the general government staff infection problem that we do have with bloated bureaucracy where it just seems to always want to perpetuate itself. It is the nature of bureaucracy to do that because that's how you justify increasing salaries, uh, special titles, moving up the food chain as a bureaucrat and becoming more powerful and having access to a lot more money. You gotta bloat the bureaucracy to justify that. So those are the three ways that I find, as we look at government anywhere, uh, at the local and state and federal level, that you're gonna always find lots of problems and lots of things to look into. The money is a big deal. But part of that money is it doesn't really matter if you can't get control. So power and control issues that lead to getting more money are the other thing that we oftentimes don't pay as much attention to, or, and at least historically haven't, as activists. So we need to do more of that. And I'll give you an example here, just a couple of them. Uh, let's look at redistricting. Redistricting comes along once every 10 years. With the census data, everybody, every state is required to redistrict to proportionally ensure that each of the congressional districts and usually the state legislative seats even down to the county level or city level where they, each city council member represents the same number of people if they're doing district-only voting. So that level of redistricting is very important. So that's where the word gerrymandering comes from, these bizarre shapes and structures to ensure that one party has perpetual control of a given legislative district. That really matters, and that is a huge fight. In my state of Washington right now, the maps recently came out, and they were radically different, what the uh, Republicans and the Democrats presented. And even though we supposedly have this nonpartisan process of doing it, the Democrats tend to be a little bit more capable in that process, and oftentimes the average citizen is totally cut out and isn't paying attention to it because we're distracted by other things. Conveniently, it comes up at a time when most people are distracted, and they don't realize how significant those maps are. We have to pay attention to that and ensure that there's a greater level of integrity in that process, because otherwise it leads to the next issue, which is where elections have fewer consequences if they're structuring these uh, basically districts so that they become, they become monocultures of one party or the other. And so election integrity is the other issue. Now, I have to tell you, if I was trying to get people to be interested in election integrity issues a few years ago, uh, I would have had a hard time filling a kitchen table with it. But now, after the 2020 election, for a variety of reasons, a lot of people suddenly are engaged in this process. And so I'm actually optimistic that there's a lot of issues that can be eventually fixed and solved as we put the spotlight on a wonkish element of government, yet one that's so critical, and one that needs a lot more attention and a lot more spotlight put on it as we realize that the rules being changed at the last minute or certain types of rules being implemented can really allow it to make it easier for people to cheat, to make it harder to vote, or to make it uh, all kinds of other problems. My goal as a, somebody who cares about good government and transparent government is to make it easy to vote but harder to cheat, and that's why it's worth paying attention to these issues. The other thing that has come up lately that is has not been as typical in the past is an ideological purge of the government workforce, which is unusual. I've never seen this. Uh, it's never really happened in our lifetimes, but using uh, these mandates, these VAX mandates, as a way to purge the workforce at both the federal and, and my state uh, in Washington at the state level, where no matter what harm is caused by it, they want to fire, uh, threaten firing anyway, of a large percentage of the workforce with the added bonus, I think, from the political leadership of knowing that you're actually getting rid of a lot of the free thinkers, or the independent thinkers, and maybe more conservative people in the workforce by using this process. So this ideological purge of the workforce is a power and control issue as well. It allows them to reduce the number of potential whistleblowers that could exist in government, for example, ensuring that the only people who are left are those who are more corrupt or willing to go along with whatever the government tells them to do. 
So ultimately, it's up to us. We have to shine a spotlight and put it on government any way we can as citizen activists, using public records, using whistleblowers, using sources inside. But pay attention to the money. Follow the money. The money is a big issue. I've done videos on this before, and I'm never going to stop saying it because it's really important. It's part of who we have to be as citizen watchdogs. Pay attention to where the money is. Pay attention to how they're trying to manipulate the power and control issues. And if you look there, regardless of whatever other distractions are going on, that is where you will find the scandals. That's where you'll find what's really going on in government. And uh, ultimately, it starts with you and I. So if you want to learn more, go to wethegovern.com. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with others and share it with other citizen activists who might be interested in doing the same thing that you are, or might find that are interested in the same subjects. And remember, the future belongs to those who show up.